Yo, what's good? We're Dropout King. And you're watching Local Band Smokeout. You. Here we go. Perfect, that's better. Ladies so, and gentlemen, really quick. Jesse and Vampires, everyone! Yeah, hell yeah! Pew, 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 pew. I gotta intro you, brother. How are you, dude? What's up? So, I know the lighting is horrible, and I'm not super done up. I want to explain to everybody what's going on. We just had a really, really horrible storm. And us and, like, 300 other people lost power. So now it's the most goth. Fuck it, it's just me and candles. That's awesome. That's awesome. Dude, so much has happened to the van since the last time we talked. I, I, was, I was talking earlier on the show how it just seems like the Vampires Everywhere stock has just gone, like, straight up a mountain, bro. So much. We've been nonstop. Nonstop. It's been crazy since we last talked. I remember when. Yeah. It was like so, well, I feel like it was like four or five months. Oh, thanks for coming back on. So I know you did the, the Cry Little Sister cover, which was received so, so well by everybody jumping in and out of, of tours. Just just tell me about what's been going on. Yeah. So we've been on a cycle of releasing a bunch of new stuff. Uh, there is new music still coming out on the way. Uh, it should be announced pretty soon. Uh, what's next, what's coming next. But uh, yeah, so last year we uh, started, we went on tour with Alice Santa, uh, Palisades and Picturesque. And that tour went incredible so well that uh, after we came, we so after that we went to Japan with this band called Syra. They're like a metal band from like- Was that your uh, first like time going to Japan? Sweden. Yeah, it was incredible. I loved it. It's 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 now my favorite place. Hell yeah. Tokyo was insane. So the, that tour went really well uh, also? Oh, it went amazing. And then the Alessandra tour went so well that uh, we decided to do round two. So that's kind of what we're in the middle of now is doing uh, the, the second part of the trilogy. Hell yeah. Tell me tell me about your Japan experience, though. Is there, was, is, tell me like a fun, cool memory or something that for somebody that's never been to Japan, like you have to go here. I'm assuming you had like a day off or two at some point. Oh yeah. So we got there pretty early. We got there like two days before the first show. Uh, and then I think we stayed a day later and we did have like a day off. Um, to so the one thing that I want everybody to know about Japan that I didn't know was that Tokyo is literally like a state in itself like you can play tokyo seven times in seven different venues and like it's still not touching the same crowd wow like it's it's bananas yeah we did five five shows in tokyo five and two of them were sold out and the last two were sold out it wasn't even the first two it was the last two Oh, hell yeah. I bet the fans yeah. go crazy for you guys, too, man. It was crazy. So my one of my favorite memories is uh, this place. I'm pretty sure it was in this uh, place called Shinjuku, which is in Tokyo. Uh, it, when you when I got out, this place looked like Times Square. This is where, like, a big nightclub is and, like, a big store. Well, there's this bar called Rockaholic, and it's literally a rock and roll bar. So we went in. And had some drinks, and it is, like, famous. Uh, everybody who tours in Tokyo that's in a rock band knows about this place. So they started playing, like, metalcore songs. Oh, cool. And then we just we just got lit up with the owner. Uh, we took a bunch of pictures. But then it was to the point where instead of, like, asking to play a song, we were just walking behind the bar and typing in, like, <laughs> what the next song was. We did it for like three hours. That's it was awesome. Amazing. That yeah, is it was so, so cool. Much fun. When when you guys did uh, the Lost Boys cover, was there was there uh, other songs that were considered besides that one? And it, it came out so good. But I'm I'm assuming there was a couple of discussions of uh, Michael was like, oh, maybe we should do this one, this one, this one. But then you settled on that one. So 
It was so not really. It was always if we were going to do something from the Lost Boys, it was going to be Cry Little Sister. For the last year and a half, we've opened up in our interludes in our set has been Cry Little Sister, like the original. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know if anybody has noticed, but every like uh, every release that we have, a collection of songs per se, either an album, EP, collection of releases, whatever it is, we've always done. The band has always done a cover. No matter what, there's always at least one. And uh, I think we're getting to the stage of the band now that we needed to kind of make that jump, make that next statement. And uh, what better way is to do the song from the movie that the band is based off of? Uh, Michael's kind of been putting it off. It sounds like something they would have done in the very beginning. Right. And everyone was kind of shocked that we didn't, including us. So where the band's at at the moment, uh, yeah, that was, I think it needed to happen. And I'm glad it did happen when it did. And uh, the cool thing about it, like you said, it's been received really well. Uh, This is the first ever Vampires Everywhere song that is on a radio, that is on the radio. Wow, dude. Yeah, so Michael doesn't want us saying this, but I'll plug it because I'm proud of it. As it stands right now, we're number 66 on Billboard. Dude, that is awesome. Hell yeah, hell yeah. That yeah, is so awesome. Anybody who's listened to it, thank you so much. That is awesome. I, I, I Prior to even knowing you, Jesse, I, I constantly joked about the company that is producing all the black paint that bands use. I want to buy stock in that company. What what brand do you use, and how much of it do do you go through on a tour? Okay, so we all use different things. Um, when I first started the band, so me and Michael use the same company. It's called Mayron. So they have like the the like the better effects paint that like you will find at like Halloween stores. Okay, but this is what like actual like professional makeup artists use is this brand he has like a liquid version that's in a tube and i have one that's like a palette that you just wet a brush and then go on i find that works better with my skin michael really likes that one but uh yeah so you know sometimes times are tough and uh some of the other guys and i have done this as well have used acrylic paint, which you shouldn't do. Yeah, don't, okay. But in a pinch. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, we shouldn't do it, but we do. <laughs> uh, you're just, like, you know, susceptible, especially when you're sweating, gets in your pores, and it's not safe. Yeah. I guess, but, I you. you know, rock and roll. But, yeah, yeah Maron. Maron, okay, cool. Uh, tell me about Ghost. I, uh, since since joining the band, I imagine you have a little more pull on on the the writing and the creating of the the tracks now. Um, so tell me about Ghost. Uh, yeah, man. So uh, especially when the songs were being written, I I definitely had my thoughts asked a little bit more, which was very nice, and especially yeah. with the rollouts of the songs which is where I really like to be, which is in like the marketing aspect of it. Um, But Ghost is like a super, super personal song for Michael. It's like one of the most personal that it has been. Um, So when Michael went to go lay down his vocals, once kind of everything was set, he actually had to go re-record a bunch of stuff after he recorded and heard ghost ghost was one of like the middle ones to be like first mixed out Mm -hmm. so he had so other songs uh i think a fire in the atlantic was one of them that he went back in because he wanted more stuff to sound kind of along the same lines as ghost it has a huge chorus um he really went back to like 
his emo influences. So like AFI, Taking Back Sunday, stuff that has a little more emotion, a little more grit in his voice. Uh, that's why I don't know if anyone's noticed, but a lot of the these songs are a lot higher than what he's been singing recently. A lot higher and a lot more controlled. And yeah, as a vocalist, he's, he's, uh, he's come a long way. And I think these songs reflect it. That's badass. Yeah, we've liked everything. We jammed a couple songs this week to like prepare for this, and we've, we've liked them all. Uh, the, the connection's kind of going in and out a little bit, but we understand the situation with the power going out. You're doing all you can. Uh, what did we do trivia-wise last time? Do you remember? The Office. The Office. Do you want to go that route again, or do you want to do something different? What are my options? Any movie or TV show in the history of time. Because I totally just trashed it the office and I haven't <laughs> watched The Office in a while. There t- I mean, Yo, my, I've been my goal is to stump you. Suits. With suits? I've been obsessed with suits. The show Suits. Okay. Let me look up Suits real quick. Uh, what, while you were in Japan... Uh, is there any like weird food items that you got to try for the first time that you'd never had before? Uh, it's not even that I tried for a first time, but there was this one day we were in, I think like Osaka and it's not, it's, it's a city, uh, but it's not, as like gentrified as, or Americanized or Westernized, whatever you want to call it, uh, as Tokyo is. So Sometimes you find these hole in the wall places like the dive bars, but like food wise, like the little places. And this one uh, literally had like half of a mackerel. And we we kind of got talked into it. The guy had very broken little English and we were like, oh, we want like fish. And he's like, got it. He just put it down. Bam. It still had the skin on it. <laughs> smelled like smelled like the sea. And he just literally took a sear and that was it. And like descaled it and it was scaled it. Yeah, yeah. Thank God the scales were still on. Wow. But uh yeah, he just seared it. It was still raw. And uh it's like the next yeah, level Benny Hanna right there. Just in, in person. Yeah, this the craftsmanship I really appreciated. <laughs> That's awesome. Hell yeah. Well, I do have some suits trivia. Did you bring the hot sauce? I got, oh, he does have it. All right. I got my, I got my mule sauce right here. Whether you get it right or wrong, I'm going to do some hot sauce in suits in the very first episode. Trevor goes to meet with the drug suppliers. What game are they playing? When he meets them, dude, this is what the fuck? <laughs> you know? I'll repeat it. So, dude, this is what I'm. I'll I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It says two of the drug dealers are playing this game while Trevor is being threatened and forced to stay with them while Mike delivers the briefcase. They're playing a specific yeah. game. God, I don't. I don't want to see. I I first thought poker too, but my actual my first thought was do, like dominoes or something because that sounds that sounds too it sounds too easy to say poker. Let's go with dominoes. It is not correct. <laughs> Let's enjoy the hot sauce. Oh, yeah. The answer is backgammon. Cheers. Fucking backgammon. <laughs> I love that part. I love that part. So where, where, um, I know you can't tell us too much, but I know that once Alisana stuff is done, the second leg of the tour, um, that you guys have a lot more mapped out. What are you allowed to tell me? And maybe you can kind of be like secretive. You don't have to say tour title bands involved, but we may be going here. We may be going there. Okay. Um, so right now in 2024, 
we are kind of in the building phase, which we have a couple, we're talking to a couple bands uh, about going out. Um, we did get booked at a very prominent goth festival uh, that takes place in New Jersey. So that's going to be super cool for us. And we're also set to play a very prominent goth club in in like the very early 2024 and it's a goth club we've played before so it's a staple so uh hell yeah a lot a lot's happening um right okay so there's i'm just putting it out there uh we're trying to find friends to like tour with to like that that'll make it fun and uh right now i I would love if it happens, but like we've tried, we've been talking about going out with, uh, until I wake. Oh, hell yeah. Those guys are awesome. We've never had them on the show, but, uh, we definitely know their music really well. I think they're on fearless maybe, but yeah, yeah we we know who they are. Those guys are awesome. And they're, they're, they nonstop tour also. Yes. That is badass. That'd be a, that'd be a, a, a fun lineup for sure. And then I I hope I'm able to see you at the whiskey in the in the near future for that for that Alice on a show that'll be a fun time hanging out. Yeah, I told you come out. That that is an amazing show. We played it last, like I said, we played last year, and it's incredible. Hell yeah! Uh, I don't think I've ever asked this before, but what? Let's just do some fun questions for a second. What uh what scares you? Do you have any? Do you have any phobias or anything that that freaks you out? I hate bees. I'm getting better with it, but like that, uh, anything that's creepy, crawly, I don't like. Uh, there are these little bitches called camel crickets. Okay. Some people call them spider crickets. They look like little aliens, and I hate them. <laughs> I know For they sure. can't hurt me, but like they just look, they look like something out of a horror movie, and I fucking cannot stand it. Uh, <laughs> I also am a little bit afraid of like the pitch black, like the dark. Really? Yeah, it freaks me out. If I if I close my eyes and open them and see the same thing, it freaks me out. If so, if someone was ever like, "Here's five hundred bucks, dude," but you got to put the the beehive outfit on where they can't get inside, but you got to have bees. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I would do that. I would I fucking wig out all time. <laughs> all right, cool. I. I, I'd fucking wig out. When can we expect? Well, is there any more videos or 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 singles attached that we could expect to be released before the year is over? You can expect definitely something before the year is over. Uh, yes, that's how I'll word that. It's not necessarily a single that you can be expecting, but there's. It's coming. Okay. Before the end of the year. Okay. Uh, something we got something awesome to look forward to. Well, hell yeah. Yes. All right. Worry, you're stay with me. My phone's on one percent, but I have an idea. We're going to my car. Okay. We're doing this, guys. Well, we we we're doing this. We only have time to do like one or two more questions, so maybe we can squeeze them in real quick. That's fine. Uh, what is do it. what when when in the states in touring? Not going overseas. Give me, give me two or three tour essentials that you absolutely never forget. That maybe somebody that's going on their first tour never thought they should bring. I love this question. This is one of my favorite questions. Uh, so for me personally, I should have done this in the very, very beginning. This is gonna be, this is gonna be very lucrative. Hold on. We got this. Okay. We got this. We got it. We got this, everybody. Thank you. Okay. So, tour essentials. Uh, wet wipes. For the love of God, wet wipes. Um, deodorant, because all of you smell. Bring, like, three sticks. <laughs> and then me, personally, uh, I am a very superstitious person. So, I have what I've talked about this before. So I have this little rock my girlfriend gave me before a tour once and was like, oh, this rock will give you luck. 
I wore it for the first show. I put it in my pocket. Great show. Second show, my beater flies off my ki- my kick pedal. Middle of the set, there is no way it could have ever done that. The screw was still tight. Couldn't get it back in. I have never not played with a pocket rock since. It's been a year and a half. Wow. So it is that really is good my luck. Pers- that is my personal tour essential is uh, the wet wipes, deodorant, and something that gives you good luck. Awesome. And uh, we'll leave it. We'll leave it with, I guess, I got one more after this one, but uh, tour pranks that you played on Alisana or vice versa. Oh my God. We've really talked about like trying to get them really good. We haven't really pranked them hard. We haven't really pranked them. Um, I'm pro- okay. So this is this, this sounds dumb because we haven't really pranked each other. But the last show of one of the legs last year, as I was playing, uh, their tour manager kept throwing like like gummy chickens but it wasn't it wasn't like gummy you eat right it was like that weird like toy consistency okay that like stuck to things like one of those slap hand things he just kept throwing them at me i don't know where he got it and then uh dennis and jake from alisana the leg after that bought nerf guns randomly and started shooting everybody with them. That's awesome. I love I love going to the last shows on tours because all this all the shenanigans and stuff comes out. And then uh Jesse, I'm gonna leave you with one last question. Uh and then of course after answering this, please plug, promote anything that you that uh, we may have missed. But uh is there is there a specific warm up routine that you do and or that the band does right before going on stage? Oh, I think that was the one percent. I think, I think that. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band smokeout.